Good morning. Morning. Um, it's Tuesday night for us. Who? Wednesday morning for you guys. Why did you say that like that? Because you know what that means. It's Bible study. Is today the last? Who am I, or is there one more after this? Um, it might be the last. I might. I might go into overtime. And just finish it off. Yeah, because the following week there's no Bible study, and I don't want to break this up. Wow, are you guys ready for some overtime? Yeah, so Bible study tonight, 7 o'clock California time. Usually it's 7 to 8, but it might go into a little bit of overtime. Not a lot, maybe 20 minutes over. So. Yeah, uh, awesome. Yeah, I want to, I want to, it's going to be good. So anyways, guys, um, hopefully you guys are waking up great. Feeling awesome, and um, and we are here. You didn't have your mic on. Sorry. That's messed up, eh? Don't yell at me, eh? <coughs> got it on now. Yeah. So, um, man, we got up early. Well, we had a rude awakening this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I know the Abra I think it was Abraham that walked. No, no, no? It was Bobo, I think. Oh. Uh, yeah, he got up and he went out and um, didn't realize the alarm. He set off the alarm and... The house alarm. Yeah, it scared the heck out of us. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Yep. Which was funny because I had set my, my clock to wake me up at 8 in the morning. And I think I snoozed it because we were kind of up late. I snoozed it too, I think, yeah. because I, my alarm was supposed to come open, um, wake me up at 7 o'clock in the morning. Oh, really? And I snoozed it too. Yeah, but then that really woke us up like 8.15 or something like that, was it? Yeah, it was about that time. Yeah, so I mean, I was glad. We had to get up anyways. Yeah, we had to get up anyways, make a quick run to where I get my painting, my prints at. Yeah. And uh, which is an hour away or so, and then had to come back and went to the grocery store. And man, Thanksgiving's next week, and the grocery store were packed. Yeah. Yeah. So well, we didn't get a lot of stuff. We just got a few little things. Yeah, we just we had to get a few little things. And yeah, because I have to get some baking done um, before I leave to to see my kids. Yeah. So did that, and then uh, man, finally. Remember I told you I was going to bust out my uh, a canvas because I'm about to paint something? It took me three days to figure out what I wanted to paint. I know. But now I know. So you're going to have to find out when I start doing it. <laughs> but um, the canvas is out. I already know what I'm going to paint. There's only going to be 10 prints made of it, and that's it. And uh, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so it's really nice. Yeah. I'm excited. I'll tell you, should I tell them the name of it of the painting though? Yeah. I don't know if you guys know, but if you saw the one I had of the tomato truck, I called it La Máquina because that's what we called it when I was growing up. The tomato harvester, where all the workers would go and sort out the bad tomatoes and the and the dirt rocks, dirt clods, and um. So I made a painting called The Máquina. Well, this new one's called Los Trabajadores, The Workers. Oh, man. Los Trabajadores or El Trabajador? Los Trabajadores. Mm. There's four of them. Mm. So, and then after that, my daughter that visited yesterday is going to pose for the next painting after that. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about that. So <clears throat> she's going to be the model that we use for... Uh, yeah. It's easier when we take a picture of it for me to paint it than just to make it up in my head. Yeah. I kind of took a, a picture for this one. Yeah. 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 Partial uh, of it. Yeah. Partial of it. Mm -hmm. What we do got to do really fast. I just realized we're about to finish the identity and don't have a cover. Yeah, I know. I need to do a picture and so for the cover. I don't want to get held back by that. I'll, I'll put a white cover on it if I have to. But... I don't even, I'm not even sure, I haven't even brainstormed with you what. I have some ideas, but I wanted to run them by you. 
Because sometimes, like, you'll take my idea, and then you'll say, what about, and then you add to it, you know, and so. Um, I do photography, guys, just so you guys all know. Yeah, she did Pastor Thomas's book cover. Uh, so, um, and and the, some of the paintings I've done. You guys ready? Yeah, let's just get into this. Yeah? Yeah, let's do it. All right. We are in the book of James in the New Testament, chapter 1, verse, what is it? Is it 19 to 21? Yes. Yeah, 19 to 21. James is actually the half-brother of Jesus. The half-brother of Jesus. So James's real father was Joseph and Mary. And as you know, Jesus um, was raised by Joseph but conceived by the Holy Spirit. But nevertheless, James was Jesus' little brother. And he became a pillar in the church. Especially once Peter got arrested for a time, James stepped up. And what's crazy is during the life of Jesus, James um, would basically mock Jesus. But anyways, um, he says something that I wanted to share with you guys today and see what you guys think. Um, It says this, So then, my beloved brethren... Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with weak, I'm sorry, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Amen. Uh, David read out of the New King James, and I'll be reading out of the message, and it says, Post this at all the intersections, dear friends. Lead with your ears, follow up with your tongue, and let anger straggle along in the rear. God's righteousness doesn't grow from human anger. So throw all spoiled virtue and cancerous evil in the garbage. In simple humility, let our gardener God, landscape you with the word. Make a salvation garden of your life. Amen. Mm-hmm. You know, a few points I wanted to talk about here that I think is, is, you know what I love is I love, as you know, this is relevant Bible talk. So we like to take scripture, explain the scripture, and discuss how that's relevant to us today because yeah. that's a lot of issue guys i know we haven't said this in a while but the reason we started this channel is because in pastoring a church there's so many people that say i know i'm supposed to read the bible i have a desire to read the bible but i have a hard time understanding the bible yeah and if i do understand the bible i have a really hard time how that applies to me if these people were living 2,000 years ago or whatever, how does that help me today at my job, at my school, in my marriage, in my family? And that's why we do this. That's why it's called Relevant Bible Talk, to learn what the original biblical, biblical context was. And how does that apply to How can that help us today? Right? How can I apply it? Yeah. yeah. And that's why I do little tidbits like saying James is the younger brother of Jesus and he took over the church once Peter got arrested. So just give you some backdrop of it, you know, but um, it's interesting, right? Because here he says, he's talking to the believers because when he wrote this, um, he was leading the church. You know, Jesus had already risen. He had already ascended up to heaven. Peter's in jail. And James, that's a lot of pressure on James. Yeah. And and, it's, and he was given a big responsibility to yeah. watch over watch over their mother. Yeah, he must have been he must have been very respected for him to because you got to remember he made fun of Jesus during Jesus' yeah. ministry. Yeah. But now for him to be a pillar of the church, yeah. you know, and and so he writes this letter to the believers because a lot of the believers are scattered. Christianity was being persecuted. Um, they had scattered everywhere. So James felt compelled to write this letter he was very direct because it had he had to be direct because of what was happening right but he says here he was my beloved brethren let every man be swift to hear slow to speak and slow to wrath i have a feeling that tensions were heightened things were happening christians are being arrested and people were getting getting in their flesh 
People are getting all up in their feelings, getting in the flesh. And, and James is like, listen, we can't do that. We can't go from zero to 60 anymore. You know, we have to learn to, like he says, we, we need to be quick to listen, but slow to speak and slow to wrath. Yeah. You know, and, and I think, man, if any verse is going to be relevant, this is, a, this is a verse that's relevant because I think a lot of us, I mean, let's admit it. Some of us, we're so quick. We're so quick to jump instead of just listening to the context of what somebody's saying to us. I think that's a verse that we need to practice daily. You know how they say we renewal of the mind? Yeah. And that's a verse that we need to make sure that is, is, is part of our daily life every day and just make sure that that's part of the renewing of the mind, you know, and we just say, Lord, let this be part of, of the renewal of the mind, you know, let this be part of my every day because um, patience is a virtue. It's part of, of learning to understand people. And, and we got to remember that, you know, even though we're, we're part of, you know, we're in this world, we're not part of it, you know, mm -hmm. and we got to still live in it, you know? Yeah. So it, it's unfortunate, but, we're still here, guys, and and we got to we got to learn to to be able to be patient with it. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that like pastor in the church, it, it can be it can be challenging, guys. You know, because no, really, a little bit, <laughs> just a, a little bit, like like <laughs> Un that, <poquito. laughs> that much. And how um, much, babe? How much? Um, can you fit a paper in there? Not that much. <laughs> So it can be challenging because like it says here, he goes, you got to be swift to hear, you know, and, and that means you, you got to try your hardest to have 360 ears. And what I mean by that is this, is when, when an issue comes up, you have to, tr and I know it's hard because we're all going to be biased unto ourselves because we are, we are us and we come with our preconceived filters of things, but um, anytime something comes up, you got to be swift to hear this and put yourself in their shoes and put yourself in the shoes of the person to try to see this thing in a 360 way, you know, and because he says, be quick to hear, but slow to speak, you know, and especially slow to wrath, yeah. you know, and, and I think that, um, and not even just, not even in church, in family, at the workplace, whatever. In every situation. Yeah, you know what's messed up is usually, like, say there's an issue. Whether it's a boss or a pastor or a mom or a dad or whatever, it always seems like the first person to bring the problem to you, you automatically take their side without hearing the other side. Yeah. And what if, what if you're biased only because this side got to you first? Yeah. You know, and then later, so now you're mad at this person, so now when this person, because you... 100% believed everything they said. And maybe they were, it was truth to them through their perspective. And then this person comes, you're biased to them already. You know, you've already been infected with this person's story. And, and I think sometimes it's not even about you're right, you're wrong. It's, you know what? In the way you saw it, it's right to you. But have you thought, you know, that's why, man, we got to... We got to be slow to speak. Or how about also the situations where, you know, it's really not for us to make any decisions, um, whether what's right or what's wrong. Mm -hmm. But, you know, or when somebody has wronged you um, and, you know, it's hurt you, but there's not much you can really do about it, you know, and... Um, you know, there's going to be people that have talked about you, that have, you know, that have hurt you, that have wronged you, that have backstabbed you and everything. And, and maybe, you know, you know things and you just, you know, sometimes it's just not even worth getting angry about or anything. And sometimes it's better just to, just to take it up to God, you know, and just give it unto the Lord. Um, and, you know, the, the Lord will, the Lord will move on your behalf you know, and touch that person's heart. And, and sometimes you have to just do that, you know, and, and I've had situations where, where that happens too, you know, yeah. where, you know, you know, somebody has wronged you, you know, they're talking about you and, and you know this, 
And they have no idea that you know. And you know what? But, you know, you continue to treat them with love. You continue to just love them. And um, you take it unto the Lord. And, um, and that's what you do. Because eventually, later on, they realize, you know what? She's not that person. She's not that bad, bad of a person after all, you know? And, you know, I was wrong. For, for wronging her or I was wrong for wronging that person and you know and I believe that sometimes that's how things happen sometimes too yeah. you know when you take it unto the Lord and the Lord is he himself humbles that person he ends up humbling that person and um, we have to sometimes just leave it unto the Lord and just allow him to be the one to to humble yeah. them yeah yeah, you know, I mean, just for me, there's so many different instances. I'm there just is. like, there really I'm truly like, should, is. I'm just like, man, what examples could I say right now? I think because, that's where grace comes in. Yeah. Yeah. But it says swift to hear. So we have to be able to listen quickly. I, li I like what that says, but slow to speak yeah. and slow to wrath. You know, and, and, then, and then it wraps it up in, in the next verse, as far as that idea because the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. What does the righteousness of God? It means to be in right standing with God. So if we're always jumping to, to, to wrath, get angry, go zero to 60, that does not come from God. That does not put you in right standing with God. That doesn't, and, and, and sometimes as a Christian, we'll say, well, that's, I'm righteously angry. Well, mm. no. Yeah. You know, now there's times where you can be righteously angry. Um, I'm angry the fact that this concert, that thing, and all, all this demon stuff and people died. I am righteously angry because those are yeah. children. I don't, yeah, okay, some are 20, 21. You know what? Those are kids to me still. To me, a 21 year old is still a baby. You know what I mean? So it's like that, I'm righteously angry about that. Yeah. yeah. You know, but, you know, but it, it, that's a different kind of anger. It says, the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. You want to be in right standing with God? Then be quick to hear, but slow to react. You know, and I think we could all work on that. Yeah. You know, so quick, we're quick to get offended. So quick to jump to conclusions. So quick to, you know, judge things. In, a, in our limited understanding, and we open our mouth before we even understand the facts. Yeah, I think we can do that so easily too in in, in our marriage, you know, and and even even us ourselves, guys. You know, it it doesn't matter how long you've been married, whether you've been married a short, even though you've been married a short period of time, or you can be married a long period of time. But I think it in the end, in the end, you know, communication is so important and learning um, to talk to one another and coming to an understanding is very, very important. And um, be slow to be able to listen to one another um, and come to an agreement or come to get to understand one another is so mm -hmm. important so that, you know, you can be able to find a balance in, in everything that we do, you know, because... There's been times, guys, trust me, where I know that there should have been times where this man should have gone from zero to 60, but he'll just stay quiet. And I'm like, ay, 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 you know, Ooh. but you, oh, <laughs> because I know that, you know, there's been times where I was like, man, he should be upset, but, you know, or I should have made him upset, but, you know, and he'll just, you know, he'll keep himself together and I'll be like, you know what? you know what, I'm sorry, you know, I'm, I'm, you should be upset, you know, but uh, I'll sit down and I'll tell him, but this is how, this is how I feel, you know, and I'll, I'll explain myself and I'll share my feelings and I'm tell and I'll tell him, this is how I feel. And maybe I misunderstood you and we'll explain to each other how we each made each other feel. And we, we then realized that it was a misunderstanding a lot of the times you know, he'll be like, well, I didn't hear you or I didn't hear you. And we misunderstood each other. And a lot of the times, I think a lot of the times things can be taken out of context a lot of the times. And I think that's why it's so important that there be communication so that things are not misunderstood. Right. Yeah. And especially in a marriage. It's so important. And you're not always going to get it right, man. Yeah, but, you're not. 
you know, I think to, to have this verse, I think it'll prevent a lot of a lot of trouble. Yeah, absolutely. You know, to, to seriously to be swift to hear and then slow to speak. A lot of times, you know, you get you get angry at something somebody said and um, so you see red in the first sentence, but they told you a whole paragraph. But had you listened to the whole paragraph, you wouldn't have been mad in the first place. But because, you know, and, and, and we tend to do that and we shut things out, we shut people out. And, um, and it becomes a miscommunication because you fail to even listen to everything the person was saying, you know, yeah. we have to be swift to hear, but slow to speak. Don't be so quick to, to cut the person off if they're trying to explain something. I mean, what if, what if just waiting a second, hear the person out could prevent an argument? Yeah. You know, I mean, I think this would be a better world if if people would do this, you know, everywhere from all the way from politicians down to even getting pulled over. OK, you know, and I, I know people get all like, oh, cops and cops this and cops that, you know, imagine getting pulled over. Right. I get pulled over. Imagine me and you go right now to get a locomoca or something. And all of a sudden a cop pulls me over and pulls me out at gunpoint. OK. So two things are going to happen. One is I'm not going to comply because I know that you and I are just going to get a loco mocha, you know, or I comply. And somebody of you might be, well, why would, why would you comply? Okay, now let's flip the script. Let's say we're the officers and we just happen to be partners, husband and wife, and we're driving and we get a call that somebody just literally killed somebody with a black SUV. And they're heading down Harding Way. And then I happen to, we happen to look and I said, boom, there's a black SUV. And I'm like, babe, we got to pull our guns out because I want to come home to our kids. So let's be really careful. Pull them out. We have our guns drawn. See what, see what I mean? Yeah. Like a lot of times, you know what I mean? And, and if, let's say, and now I'm back in the car. Let's say I comply. And they come with their guns drawn, you know, and they're like, you have ID and get out of the car, blah, this and that. And they realize, oh, this ain't even the people we're looking for. Yeah. You know, the officers would be like, you know what? This is, you know, we made a mistake, man. We're, you know, here's your ID. Here's whatever. Sorry. Maybe they don't say sorry. Maybe they're, they're so amped up because they, they didn't know what they were going to face right now. Yeah. Yeah. You got to put yourself all the way around. And, and don't get me wrong. The officers need to put themselves in the shoes, too, of the person in the car, too. It goes all the way around. That's why I said if we would do this, we would it would be a better world. Because sometimes officers do jump to conclusions. Sometimes they do do that. But you know what? I'm not going to provoke. Even, even though they're jumping to conclusions, I'm not going to provoke that. Well, I think that's why we always have to give an opportunity to speak and be given an opportunity to speak likewise. Yeah. You know, I think that's so important. One thing I've learned with my mom, you know, my mom was somebody that I can never get a word in with. You know, I think you saw that the other day. It was so hard. You know, I couldn't even get a word in. And I finally, you know, there's finally moments where I just tell her, mom, please let me talk. You know, um, and 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 sh finally she she has to listen. You know, I'm like, I I need you to let me talk. You know, I'll hear you out, but hear me out. You know, and she'll stop, and she'll listen to me. You know, I'll listen to you, but I need you to listen to me. You know, and I and I realize that because I remember, you know, I I remember telling you that, you know, for a really really long time. I used to be somebody that I would, you know, kind of like stop people and say something. And, and, and it wasn't that I was trying to be rude. It's just that I had that thought at that moment and I would just say something and interrupt without really thinking. But I realized that it wasn't because I was just trying to interrupt. It was because I wanted to get my point across and not forget what I was going to say, yeah. you know, 
But I realized that there's ways of doing that. And it took me a while for me to be like, I, I, I realized that there's ways of doing that. Like, you know, can I stop you for a moment? You know, um, excuse me, hold, hold that thought for a moment. You know, let me interrupt you for a moment. Because I, you know, and I know I do that to you sometimes and I'm trying so hard, you know, trust me. It's like, I'm trying so, so hard. So now I just sit there and I listen. And when I get a chance and there's a pause, I'll get in there and I'll say something. But I'm, I'm learning. I, I finally have learned to just, you know, just take my pause and then I'll go in when I can. But I, I am. It's something that is learned, you know, for, for people that have always been interrupters, you know, because there is people that they interrupt so quickly. Yeah. You know, but it, it's it's something that's not easy because there is a lot of people that do that, mm -hmm. that they just talk, 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 and they don't let a word in. They don't let people talk at all. There's some people that will not let anybody talk at all, mm -hmm. you know, um, but and then there's people that will just interrupt and or will just finish off people's sentences and and it's just like you didn't even know what i was gonna say yeah you know and what it does it kind of it kind of turns people off from even continuing a conversation yeah you know like um a lot of times if if i ever feel like um like somebody is okay when you're in a conversation you're either a listener or, or you're just thinking of what you're going to say next. So a lot of times people will talk and talk and talk and talk. And then when you actually talk, they're not even listening to you. They're, you can literally see their mind spinning with what they're going to say next. And those people are not listeners. They're not listening. They're just waiting to speak. Mm. So there's listeners and then there's people that are waiting to speak. You know, and... You know, I'm 49 years old, so when I spot that, I instantly check out. I will check out. I will mentally check out on that person, you know, and that, and that's, um, but anyways, we're, that's going to go off in a different direction, but. Well, I think, no, but yeah. I, you know. I well, think, actually, no, because it's just slow to speak. Slow to speak, quick to, yeah, and, quick I, to and I think this is, this is really, really important, David. Yeah, yeah you're right, it is in context. How, how do you. This is in context because how do you become a listener? How do you become, mm -hmm. you know, you yeah. have to have this. This comes hand in hand to yeah. this. Yeah, because it doesn't necessarily be wrath. It could be swift to hear, but slow to speak. Yeah. Like, take a chill pill. Hear this the, is hear, important. Hear the person out. Absolutely. Hear them out, guys. And and um, it doesn't have, you're right. It doesn't have to lead to wrath. Because just if you're swift to hear, imagine going backwards, right? If you're slow to hear, but quick to speak. Yeah. So you ain't hearing, but you're so quick to speak, you know? And, and you know, believe it or not, if you do that, people catch it. And, and it almost feels disrespectful. It does. It, it almost feels disrespectful. It does feel disrespectful, you know, and, and, like, like, for instance, if I say something, I want people to take it like it's important and not be written off. Yeah. You know? And if you're just ta -ta 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 -ta, just chatting away, and, and what happens is, I remember there's this cartoon um, of this big dog and a little dog. And the little dogs are just yapping, 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 and, and to the point where the big dog just ignores them. You know? And you never want to be that person. You want to be the person that when you speak... Because they know wisdom's gonna come out, you know. And, and I would rather be the one that that says less words, and when I do speak, it's wisdom than just chatting, you know. Just just like those teeth, those teeth that, that whine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we have to be swift to hear and slow to speak. <laughs> but <laughs> I feel like a little kid. When you know, you it's wire in that. It's gonna break. Okay, I'm sorry. So, um, but we haven't even touched the next verse, which is this. Because it says that, it says, therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. Anything that is not of God, just lay it aside. Yeah. Put it to the side. Lay aside filthiness and overflow of wickedness. And, and it gives an option. 
It gives an option. So instead, it says, receive with meekness the word. I love that word, meekness. Which is able to save your souls. You know, the... Meekness, I, I love it because it's like you have the capability to destroy. Yeah. And, and but yet then to be so gentle in love, but the capability to just destroy, yeah. you know? And I think that's just, that's just so beautiful that Jesus has the capability, but yet then loves us and, and just embraces us with such carefulness. Yeah. And and just so gently, you know. There's a scene, I don't remember the whole movie, but that scene. Um, the Blind Side. I've never no? seen The Blind Side. And it's not The Blind Side? I've never seen it. So it can't oh, be Facing that. the Giants. No, it's a cartoon. Or oh. no, no, it's a. Um, C.S. Lewis wrote it. It's like a make believe fantasy with a lion. Oh my gosh, I can't think of it right now. Follow the yellow book road? No, I don't know what that is. Oh. Not the lion with no heart. Oh. That's that's Wizard know. of Oz. <laughs> um, oh, man. it's C.S. Lewis wrote it. Anyways, I'm going to put it, the title right here. I'll find it after this on editing. But that movie that you see right there. <laughs> um, the lion. The, C.S. Lewis as a Christian, wrote this children's fantasy and it became a movie, right? And the characters represent, it's the gospel story. So there's a lion in it. And um, the lion, people are afraid of him. And, and he roars and everybody's afraid. But then he comes and the, the girl and the, the, the character girl, she cuddles up with the lion and the lion just lets himself just kind of um, like this vicious lion. But with the girl, he turns meek. Yeah. This thing that could destroy. Because in this fantasy movie, the lion represents Jesus. Mm. You know, and it's such a beautiful scene. And, I want to um, watch it now. Oh, yeah, it's on, it's on there. Really? Yeah, so C.S. Lewis wrote that. But anyways, it says, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls, guys. Mm. Wickedness cannot save you. The things of the enemy cannot save you. Filthiness cannot save you. But instead, with receive with meekness. You know, um, to receive the word meekness is allowing God. It's, it's allowing yourself to be humble before a holy God. Yeah. You know, because a lot of times men men are so prideful. We're like, I'm not kneeling to nobody. Well, you know, the Lord says don't kneel to nobody either, but him, because he's worthy. It's it's allowing yourself to be in a vulnerable state and knowing. With him. Knowing that he will catch you, knowing that he will be there to to guide you, that he will be there to embrace you, that he will be. He will be there for everything in yeah. your most vulnerable state. Yeah. I mean, put it this way. The biggest example of meekness was Jesus. The creator of everything allowed his creation to crucify the creator. <laughs> When they came to arrest Jesus, he tells Peter, don't you know I can have a legion of angels come? He, tell, he told Pontius Pilate to his face, he goes, you can't kill me. Hmm. He goes, nobody has, nobody can take my life. He goes, I give my life. I give my life, really. And I take it back, he yes. says. You know, so that was... If that was not the greatest example of meekness ever, do you understand what Jesus could have done? He literally could have snapped his fingers and destroyed this earth. People, people trip out like in the Marvel comics, what's his name, Thanos, because he goes like this and people just, everything. Dude, that's make-believe. Jesus was real. And Jesus literally could have 
snapped everything out of existence. That if if that is not a a withholding of force, he he could have crushed us. But instead, he chose to be meek because he loved us so much. The Bible says in the Old Testament that that he remembered that we are just made from dust. He could have, he can, and he will. Yeah, well, the day will come. Yeah. But I don't want to be at the at the at the end of that mm-hmm. wrath. No. I want to face him, not as my judge, but as my God, yes. my Lord, and my say, Savior, my King. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that uh, that inspired you today, encouraged you today, um, that spoke into your life. You know, to to be quick to listen, but slow to speak and slow to wrath. You know, and um, and allow yourself to be humble to the Word of God, because if you read the Bible pridefully, you're gonna cherry pick the verses you like. Yeah. But put your heart and just open your heart. Say, God, I'm going to read this word and let it shape me. Let me be clay in your hands. And the things of me you don't like, take them out. It's okay. Take them out. Take them out. It's okay. Let me be shaped by you. Let your creator shape you. Let him shape you, man. Don't hold on to your old stuff. Don't don't dictate to God what he can and cannot take out of your life. I think that's the beautiful thing about um, puzzles. The nice thing about puzzles is that there's so many pieces and that we have no control, you know, on how it's made and how, but the thing is, is that all the pieces are there and it's gonna get put back together. And that's the beautiful thing about Jesus. He's like, you know, a puzzle. You know, I, I saw a meme or something that showed a person as a puzzle, but the p- missing piece was in the middle, was missing yeah. because it was Jesus. It was Jesus, and yeah. and and you and saw I, that, and I and I, I I didn't see it, but I. But you can imagine. But it. I can imagine that because. I, I don't know why I was just looking over there right now and I thought about our puzzles that are oh. inside our, our inside our hutch and and I was just thinking it's been a long time since I've done a puzzle mm-hmm. and we have like a lot of puzzles guys you know and it has like thousand piece puzzles and there's been a few of them that I haven't even attempted to try because some of the puzzles that I have in there are really really hard and I'm so scared to even attempt to try them. We were on a little puzzle thing about a year ago. Oh, during COVID, I think. Yeah, you know, even before that, yeah. even before that. We were um, on a little puzzle right run. after right after I um I think it was like like right when we moved here. Yeah, because we, Aaliyah was staying a lot. Mm-hmm, and yeah, we just got into puzzles, you know, and and Another puzzle chapter. Yeah, yeah, but I I would really love to try again. But I I just look at I just look at look at it that way. Like, you know, wow, Lord, you know. It's like we're his puzzle and and that missing piece is is With Jesus. Him? You know, and and it's beautiful. Man, man, you know how frustrating. Remember like you would get a puzzle and you were sure this piece belonged there, but it just wouldn't quite snap in. That is us. That is us when we go to drugs or alcohol or this or yes. that and all these things. And we're trying to find that missing piece. And the whole time the Lord's like, uh, I'm, I'm right here. What am I, chopped liver? <laughs> I'm right here. I'm the only piece that will fit. I'm yeah. the only piece that will complete you. When are you going to get that? Yeah. He's the only thing that will complete you. And, and so many people in this world, you know you feel empty. You know you feel incomplete. And, and you look for it everywhere. And you even look for it in other people. Let me tell you something. Your spouse is not meant to complete you. Yeah. I know it sounds nice. It sounds romantic. Oh, you complete me. Only Jesus can com- complete you. And when you have Jesus, then you will be able to be a husband and a wife. Only then with Christ right there. He's the missing piece. That's why, that's why when I tell you guys, um, ladies, when I tell you, only Jesus will complete you. Then after, um, when the Lord brings somebody into your life, then it will be a blessing. 
he will be the blessing beyond a blessing. Everything after that will be a blessing beyond blessings, beyond blessings. Everything in your life after Jesus is just going to be blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing because it's Jesus that's going to complete you. Yeah. Jesus is going to complete you. I mean, man, if you are seeking a woman, a woman will not complete you. It's Jesus that's going to complete you. And after that, the wife that he gives you, it's going to be the blessing that he's going to be bestowing upon you. It's a blessing. The home that he gives you is going to be a blessing. It's not going to complete you. There is nothing that will complete you in this life. That's what you have to understand. There is nothing there is nothing in this world that could complete yeah. you. Only and, Jesus. And it doesn't have to be drugs or whatever. There's people that say, man, once I get that car, I'll be happy. No. Once I get that home, once I get that position in my job, once I get... Finish my career. I no, once, I'm sorry. Once I get nothing. that degree. No, nothing. You know, once I get this amount of money in my savings, once, and you're just always following the carrot. And the carrot's always getting further and further and further away. Why do you, why do you think there's so many um, billionaires and millionaires and actors and people that have, have it all? They have so much fame and money and all of that, but are still so empty. They're so empty, you guys. Yeah. They're, they're empty in here. You know, they feel alone. They still have so much rejection. They feel alone. They're they're completely starting. They feel like they need validation. They need validation of the world. They need validation of beauty. You know, they need the perfect body. They need, you know, the clothes. They need the fame. They need money. They need the best cars. They need, they're constantly trying to fill more and more to more to fill the need. But the thing is, is that the thing that they're trying to fill, that they don't realize what they need is Jesus. Amen. You know, he can fill that void. I agree. Yes, and it's my gosh, once you once you really really truly 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 surrender and you give him a chance, I mean, trust me, you can never ever you'll never really ever want to go back to anything else because he fills everything. He'll he'll fill that void that you have just been feeling all your life amen yeah so with that guys we're gonna let you go tonight bible study we're most likely unless the holy spirit says something different we're going to finish the who are you in christ uh, who are you identity in christ am i going to overtime you know and unless something different then we'll prolong it but as far as i know it's going to be done. And then the following week, there will not be a Bible study. We always cancel the Bible study the day before Thanksgiving and also the day before Christmas, Christmas. Eve. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Love you guys.